Alright, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and welcome back to Harvest December. So in the last part, we did some heavy theological stuff with Takaki and his friend in the mountains. And in this part, we're going to be apparently returning to the uh, the rest of the party, the rest of the party that we left behind. Routine. All right, we just have one word on that screen. Naomi declared, and we headed towards the dojo. We all followed. We all expected to just casually watch her morning routine. However, yeah. Sliding the wooden pole in her hands, Yuki struck out at Naomi, aiming for her nose. Naomi reacted. Naomi reacted swiftly. She stepped on Yuki's left, uh, deflecting the hit with perfect timing. Fighting with the poles was different from fighting with the Naginata, because there was no blade either end that could be used to attack. Yuki changed her grip on the pole and slowly paced towards Naomi. Ugh. Naomi never flinched. A true warrior was never taken surprised. The only strategy and calculations there was only strategy and calculations running through her mind now. As soon as Naomi threw a punch, Yuki flipped the pole in a circular motion with her left hand, aiming for Naomi's jaw. It almost hit her. Ugh. Yuki retracted, dodging an attack to the back of her head. Stepping to the side, and a few strands of hair broke and floated to the floor. She quickly regripped the pole in her hands and ready for her second attack. Hmm. Naomi was scratching with the attention to follow with another blow, but then she thought otherwise and straightened her posture. She took a different stance. This is intense, Kohai said out loud, his mouth hung open. Everybody held their, their breath. The session was at the JoJo started out with easy stretches and warm-ups. And now this. So this is what you are, Yuki held a pole with a shallow grip. First stretch, Kasugigayari. Sure. Naomi was standing right before her. But Yuki felt her presence behind her. And her attack came from somewhere else. It took a lot of training to be able to use this in my regular state. Naomi said as she studied her breathing. Hey, that's a complete sentence. You're talkative when you're fighting. You're a worthy opponent, Yuki. Auntie Mashiro, aren't you going to stop them? Why would I interrupt their fun? And also, huh? Did you just call me auntie? Yeet! You have good energy. However, uh, Yuki took a wider step. She was going to wait for Naomi to attack and counter her. That was her mistake. How about this? Naomi looked as if she was simply waiting. Not even quickly, just simply walking. Yuki's con confusion was apparent. Was she going to strike? Or was she waiting for her to strike first? Idiot. Mashiro frowned. The slight hesitation in her down was her downfall. Her awareness stretched out as she thought, causing her to forget the time. Naomi was quick. Before Yuki could recover, she had stepped before her. That was the moment. Yuki slid the pole between her hands, swinging it in the shortest distance possible. She had reacted almost by reflex, but... Again, she felt Naomi's presence behind her. She received a blow to the back of her head. She staggered forward, but regained her stance immediately. Ugh. Yuki used all of her energy to strike out. Your aim is off. Um, Naomi had stepped to her side, and Yuki was taken down. After a moment, Yuki regained consciousness. She slowly opened her eyes. Yuki, are you alright? I lost, Yuki mouthed as she stared up to the ceiling. She turned her head to see Naomi already returned to her usual routine practice. You need more practical experience, Naomi stopped. Fight! She took Yuki simply. She, then she scanned the room. Are you her teacher? Yes. I'm sorry my disciple is not accomplished enough to entertain you, Mashira said as she nodded happily. Adieu, please. Aren't we supposed to go sightseeing? I'm not sure if we have the time. Problems? Everybody shook their head. Only Megari stayed still. No problem. Hmm. Ah, Mashira-san. Don't worry, it won't take too long. Kohai was about to protest, but he lost his words with each step Mashira took towards Naomi. Uh, Mashiro picked up the wooden pole lying next to Yuki. With a flick of the wrist, she gave it a turn. Good quality. It slides very well. She tapped one end of the floor. You. Come. Mashiro said as she leaned on the pole, and her eyes, her hands on top of one another. She stood like an old man resting on his walking stick. Your stance? Mashiro didn't answer. Instead, she began to walk. Being human, there was always a slight gap in your thoughts. It was impossible to keep aware for a long stretch of time. Mashira had, sli had slipped into the slightest crack in between Naomi's train of thought, but Naomi didn't falter. Mashira smiled. Naomi dug her, holes into her, dug her toes into the floor. It was the same stance that Yuki took down, that took Yuki down. Crouching from a low position, Naomi headed straight towards Mashira's lower body. Her fist shot out and hit her stomach, but this time she, charged, she changed things slightly. Ha! 
Hirkasu Jari, Jari aimed for the back of Mashiro's head. Attacking from the... I feel like that's a word that needs a vocabulary. Like green underline with it. Because I have no idea. Unless there was earlier and I just missed it. Attacking from the front and the back instead of stepping aside. Naomi moved forward even closer. But Mashiro didn't pause her in her steps. She said, clever girl, and disappeared. The first thing we saw was Mashiro's swaying hair. Her left hand catches Naomi's fist. Naomi's strike from the back was so precise, but it looked impossible to dodge. But Mashiro had deflected it, causing the fist to lose most of its force. For most of the time, Naomi's expression cracked. For the first time, Naomi's expression cracked. Mashiro stepped to her side. Her timing couldn't be any more perfect. She had stepped into Naomi's blind spot. A shadow swept across Naomi's nose. Practice! The wooden pole came down hard. The dojo was silent again. Mashiro stood, leaning on the wooden pole like an old man the way she began. The only difference was that Naomi was lying unconscious nearby. Mother! Uh... Al looked around. She seemed uncertain how to react. Magari-san, can you please bring some water? We need to wake Naomi-san up. It's time for some sightseeing. Yes! Magari nodded and quickly headed for the kitchen. Um, excuse me? Yes? Mashiro replied amiably. Where did you learn how to do that? When I was training in the mountains. Wait, I don't think I want to hear this after all. I think it's a good story. Mashiro sulked as she tapped her shoulder with a pole. Fascinating. Exit exterminated. I haven't been reading for very long, so I'm going to continue. I assume this is the same part of just out in town now or something like that, right? Naomi lost? What kind of monsters are there on the main island? On the mainland? Hey, who did it? Who did it? Naomi suffered a concussion so bad that the doctor wouldn't allow her to leave the house even when she woke. Good job, Mashiro. So instead of having her as our guide, Kiyohara and Nono came out to take her place. Kohai explained what had happened and they both reacted differently. Why do you seem so happy about it? Because that means her opponent was strong. What does that have to do with you? Mayuri frowned. For an emergency stand-in, Kiyo Howard did a pretty decent job explaining the local traditions and telling us the background on historical spots. To be fair, Naomi only would have said like, one word, maybe two, uh, everything. So I think I'd rather have Kiyo Hara explaining things to me. Just saying. I'll go get a drink. Kohai began to walk away and everybody turned to look at him. Kohai pointed at the vending machine nearby explanatorily. Explanatorily. Soon after, everybody began yelling out orders and their preferred beverages. He was now officially on an errand. Damn. Standing in front of the vending machine with a crumpled bill in his hand, Kohai realized he had a problem. How on earth did you think you would carry everyone's drinks back? Why did you follow me? I thought I would come get my own. Behind Sakura, Mayori and Sane could be seen in the distance ignoring each other. You go ahead first, Kohai decided not to ask. I'll help you. How? Like this. She took... She took hold of the helm of her skirt and lifted it a bit. It would act as a hammock to carry the drinks back. Aren't you glad I wore a skirt today? I just I just do that with my shirt. Don't do that. She was making a display of her legs. Kohai averted his eyes and scowled at the vending machine. Kohai senpai, people don't like you taking the drinks off their won't like taking their drinks off your sweaty shirt. That goes the same for you too. Not true. People would appreciate it if it comes from a girl. You underestimate the value of floral scented man sweat. That's a very niche party you'd be catering to. Kohai slipped the bill into the money slot. The vending machine beeped. Error. The bill slipped out. He tried again. And again. At long last, as if reluctantly admitting defeat, the vending machine accepted his money and the motor began to hum. The red buttons under the drinks lighted up. He pressed the button. A can of, a can of coffee dropped out. You haven't decided yet. Can't you all just get along? We can be civil, but we can't get along. He pressed the button. A can of coke popped out. Senpai! I'll have to admit, the majority of people would prefer you over me. He dropped the cans down her skirt. On her skirt. Down her skirt would be a little weird. Pl place it gently, please. What if I drop them? Sorry. You're always like that. Sakura. You'll just drop whatever you like on people whenever you like. Your kindness. Your help. Everything. Just like a bomb. Kohai stilled. He lost track of what he was supposed to buy. Spare change clattered and fell into the change dispenser. What are we, your victims, supposed to do that if you... Supposed to... What are we, your victims, supposed to do when you do that? Kohai counted the number of cans he had bought and finally turned to buy his own drink. He couldn't face the three girls standing behind him. He almost laughed in embarrassment for what a coward he had become. 
Senpai, using the example of that someone got bombed, what do you think hurts most? The pain? No, the answer being left behind. Kohai pressed the button, pressing the button. Pressed the button. Kohai paused, pressing the button. His fingers wavered in midair. When they want to yell out for help, but the person they are calling for is so far away. When they can't help themselves, but are left alone to suffer. Here's my next question. What do you think they want? Help. They either, they either want to be saved or killed in, to the end, suffering. You're talking like sure. What? They either want to be saved or killed to the end of the su or killed to the end. They either want quantity of want to be saved or quantity of want to be killed to end the suffering. All right, that makes sense. Shirasama, Yuki-san, Anoni-chan, and Won-chan are all the same. Big sister, apparently. Both of you and Misaki can choose somebody or end everything, but you just leave us adrift. Everybody else has walked slowly so that they wouldn't get left behind, but now, but by now they were quite far ahead. Kohai suddenly felt thirsty. He searched the vending machine for a sports drink to chug. Damn it! But what he wanted was sold out. Hey. You can see it from anywhere in town, Tanae explained. She was referring to the mountain. The sound is entirely centered on the Rashiki god, Kiyu Haru explained. Everything leads towards the Rashiki shrine in the mountain. Is that where we saw several stairways leading to the top? Ah, you noticed. There are five main stairways that lead towards the shrine, so everybody can reach it from whichever side of the mountain they live on. Only the main stairway is straight, and the others are laid diagonally. According to Fukuyama, it's got something to do with the shape of a pentagram. Although I don't really think much of the relevance of that. Although I don't really think much of the relevance of that, uh, Kiyohara added. Hmm, it's pretty quiet. Is there a problem with that? Well, it's the festival, isn't it? I thought things would be more... lively. Ah. Kiyohara and Nono looked back at each other awkwardly. We've only got Megari this year. For what? As a contestant. I thought it was a fighting festival. If she's alone, who is she supposed to fight against? I don't know. Kiyohara re replied without interest. Nanaki next door. How long have I been doing this for? About 12 minutes. I'm going to end this off here. I hope you all enjoy that. My name is Dragonite. I shall continue this in the next video, and I will see you all later.